Hi everyone, I am Meghna. Welcome to my channel Life to Wonder. If you are watching my video for the first time, I do travel and food blogs. Please do hit subscribe button if you have still not subscribed. If you are planning for Andaman trip, do not miss this video because I will be giving all the details so that you can plan your trip on your own. I will cover all this 10 points. Best time to travel, flight booking, number of days required, places to visit, water sports activities, commutes available in Andaman, accommodation, must try restaurants, offbeat places and last overall expenses. Let's start with when to travel. Andaman has three seasons. The first one is summer which starts from March to mid-May. Weather is hot and the temperature is around 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. This is the best time if you want to enjoy water sports activities. If you are planning to do scuba diving, snorkeling and this is one of the best time as you can see clear water. Mid to May to September is monsoon season and all the water sports activities will be closed. So this season is not recommended to travel. October to Feb is the peak season as it's a best time to travel and it's a winter season. And you can definitely enjoy all the water sports activities. Plan your trip anywhere between October to May depends on what all the activities that you want to do. The next topic is about the flights. You will get the direct flights from Chennai, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Kolkata to Port Blair. Port Blair is the capital of Andaman city. That's where the airport is located. Currently, there is no international airport and only domestic airport is there. We booked the flight from Bangalore to Port Blair and it costed us around 6,000 rupees per person for one-way travel. You get some additional discounts if you use any credit card reward points. I get this question from a lot of people. Is passport required to travel to Andaman? No, it's not required. Andaman is part of India. And you can travel to Andaman like any other states that you travel. One important information which I did not get anywhere when I am booking the flights. That is Andaman airport is closed few days every month. You can check in this website where all the dates are mentioned. So plan your trip accordingly. Next topic is itinerary. I will keep the itinerary for 5 days and then we will add more places for 7 days and 10 days. Since 5 days will be little hectic, I would suggest to plan for 7 days. This video is the complete details of all the places in Andaman. If you want to see the details about every place, go and check out in my channel where it has all the details for every individual place. Once you reach in Andaman, you will be reaching Port Blair where airport is located. First option is to explore Port Blair and then head to other islands. Second option is to travel to Havelock and Neil Island and then come back to explore Port Blair. We went with second option. You can do either ways. Our day one started by reaching the airport and we directly took the ferry and traveled to Havelock. After reaching Havelock, if you have time, then you can visit Radhanagar beach for sunset or you can go next day as well. Day 2 early morning, visit Khalapatar beach to watch a beautiful sunrise. Sunrise and sunset happens early around 5 am and 5 pm in Andaman. So plan your day accordingly. After watching sunrise, have breakfast and head to Elephant Beach for water activities. To reach Elephant Beach, either you can truck or go via boat. We did trucking. It's just 2 kilometers and trial is also pretty easy. You can take guide along with you or you can go by yourself. There is no entry fee for trucking. If you go via boat, there is a time limit of 3 hours and the price is 1000 rupees per head to board the boat. And you need to go back within the dedicated time. Upon reaching the Elephant Beach, you will be mesmerized to see Blue Beach. This is the first Blue Beach we saw in Andaman. No wonder it's called the Maldives of India. Elephanta Beach is well known for its water activities. You can experience any water activities like parasailing, banana rides, jet ski and much more. All the rides cost us 600 rupees per person for one ride. For snorkeling, it's 1,500 rupees per person including photos and videos. If you are not comfortable trying scuba diving and if you have a fear of water, you may try out sea walk which is safe and is an amazing way to experience coral and reefs. In case if you want to do scuba diving, it has to be booked in prior. There are two kinds of scuba diving here. One is at the shore and other one is deep boat dive. So the shore one will cost you around 3,000 and the boat dive will cost around 4,000. Even though the shore scuba costs you 3,000, 
don't offer show scuba as you will not be able to experience that deep sea and see clear life inside there are few shops that have a good fruits and some snacks but you will not find any restaurants around here the activities will be done by 3 pm which allows you to time to get back to hotel freshen up and go out to some good restaurants and enjoy seafood in havelock you can stay at outback hotel which has well maintained rooms and the location provides accessibility to restaurants and beaches around here price is about 3000 rupees per day if you are looking for private beach then blue island beach resort is a pocket friendly and has private beach access cost is around 3000 rupees havelock island beach resort is a little higher side and one of the beautiful resort with a private beach cost is around 5000 rupees per day if you booked well in time there are lots of restaurants in havelock few options are golden spoon restaurant one of my favorite as the food was delicious and the price was reasonable something different cafe and anju coco are good restaurants but expensive full moon cafe which gives a huge shack vibes and have a good ambience and definitely a good place to dine after exploring and eating foods at different places and restaurants we decided to end our day with an amazing dessert at bonova cafe day 3 you can take the first ferry that departs from havelock for neel island at 9 am it is an hour long commute there are two options one you can stay back for a day and explore the island or explore the place in one day and then head to port blair there are four beaches to go first one is bharatpur beach which is a beautiful beach and you have some shaded place to relax as well while you enjoy the amazing blue landscape then you can head to lakshmanpur beach there are two of them lakshmanpur beach one has a natural bridge you need to walk some distance to reach the natural bridge lakshmanpur beach 2 doesn't have much to offer as it's a rocky and rough last one is sitapur beach which is a sunrise view point since we came in the afternoon there is nothing much to do here one day stay will only be great if you want to see the sunrise from this place neel island also has water activities but it's better to do in havelock explore the place in a day and left by evening but in case if you plan to stay then you can opt for silver sand beach resort which is near sitapur beach we travel back to port blair in the last ferry that leaves at 5 pm if you plan to do the same there is a tip to keep your luggage book the same company ferry we book nautica from havelock to neel and neel to port blair we ask the captain if we can keep the luggage and we will collect at port blair that way there were no luggage while we roamed around at neel island day 4 and 5 explore port blair we started with ross island and north bay take the first boat that starts at 9 am from rajiv gandhi national park it is a half day tour first visit to the historical ross island which served as a administrative headquarters of the british during colonial rule after that visit north bay island which is a good place for water activities similar to havelock elephant beach my suggestion is to do all the water activities at havelock as water is more clearer there the next place is cellular jail which you have to visit twice one during the day where you can see the jail from inside and if you wish to know more you can hire a guide too you can visit the jail again during the evening when the light show happens which tells you the story of our freedom fighters and about the place itself you need to book the tickets online for the light show in advance i will leave the link in the description to book the tickets you can also visit chidiya tapu beach which is well known for sunset and visit corbinso cove beach the city sightseeing also includes few museums and science center which you can visit In Port Blair we stayed at Hotel Champagne. I highly recommend this hotel because of its accessibility to all the local attractions and fine dining places. Even the airport is in close proximity to this hotel. The price per day is around 2000 rupees. Hotel Sheeshell is another option if you are looking for a luxury stay. If you want to try out some good cuisine you can visit anju coco restaurant where food is delicious and this is close to cellular jail and the other one is amaya cafe which serves a good food with some good live music 
Amaya is part of Seashell Restaurant and best place for dinner. This is for 5 days itinerary which is completely packed. As I mentioned, you can stay in Havelock and Neil additional one day so that you can relax. If you want to know more details about all these places, you can check out in my channel where we have uploaded a dedicated video for each individual place. For 7 days itinerary, add one additional day in Neil Island where you can just relax or add one additional day in Havelock where you can go for kayaking to see sunset or sunrise. And for one more day, you can add one day tour to Baratang. And I definitely suggest to visit Baratang because it's an amazing and different place. For 10 days, add Diglipur. Diglipur is one of the nice places and it is good to cover if you have more days. Now let's talk about offbeat places. You can do a day tour to Baratang, where the trip starts at morning 3 am and they'll take you to the tribal area and then you can see active volcano and also the limestone cave. You can also opt a 3 day tour for Diglipur which has a beautiful beaches, waterfalls and also trekking trails. The next topic is about the transportation. Whenever you want to travel between the island, you have to book ferry. There are government and private ferries. Government ferries have to be booked at the counters near the harbour and the prices are around 500 to 600. But there are high chances that you might not get the tickets. So better to book private ferries, which can be booked online and the prices are about 1000 to 1500. I will leave the link in the description. If you want to commute on the island, the best convenient option is to hire a bike. Which cost is about 500 rupees per day. Personally, I felt that's the best way you can go around on the island. Second option is to take autos which is available on the island. And the last option is to hire a car which is little expensive one but a good option if you're traveling with family. The charges per day may range from 1500 to 2000. Another option is to explore by bus but this option is available only in Port Blair. Exploring Port Blair in this bus is definitely a pocket friendly option. In just 150 rupees, you can cover 10 points. We are left with the last part and which is very important. That's the expenses. So here is the breakup of our expenses. Flight costed us around 30,000 rupees to and fro for two people, which we booked one month in advance. Hotel price starts from 2000 and it goes up to 20,000. So it depends on your budget, you can choose the hotel. Food per day cost is around 3000, where breakfast is mostly included in the hotel. Private ferry to travel between all the islands costed us around 6000 rupees for two people. Water activities depends on what all you want to do. Here is list of all the activities that you want to do. There are three ways how you can explore the islands. The cost of the scooty is 500 rupees per day and the cost of auto is 1000 rupees per day and the cost of the car is 1800 rupees per day and entry tickets is 2000 rupees for two people. Overall cost is 75,000 rupees for two people for five days itinerary. I hope all this information will help you to plan your Andaman trip. If you have any questions, please do drop a comment and we will try to answer for all of your questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.